I think we're ready to get started. Thank you for making it out, everyone. It's super awesome to see so many faces here. Um, so my name is Levi Zitting. I'm the president of Springfield Devs. Um, and I'm going to kick us off with kind of a few announcements here. The first I mentioned to a bunch of people who were here a little bit earlier, but uh, one of our sponsors, Anthos Capital, they um, find you know, cool tech products to invest in, and they use our group to try and get some early feedback. And um, so this in product in particular, find.com, it's a, a AI search engine for developers. So um, because they sponsor us, and they give us money to pay for pizza and stuff, if you'd like to support Springfield Devs, support Anthos Capital by checking this thing out and giving them some feedback. This QR code is to a Google form to drop that feedback in. So. Um, some announcements. So some upcoming events here. So um, Springfield Tech Council actually has two events coming up. Um, number one is their modernizing disaster recovery plans. This is actually tomorrow. Uh, I can't remember where it is, um, but <laughs> it's listed on their website. What's that? Chamber of Commerce. Um, and then later this month, uh, Thursday, May 18th, their threat intelligence panel at Springfield Brewing Company. Um, also coming up on May 20th is B-Sides, a little cybersecurity event all day Saturday. Um, and the last one is OpenSGF. I'll let Zach come say a few words about the group. So uh, we're OpenSGF. We meet every Tuesday here at the Youth Factory at 6. We build websites for nonprofits, and we're very beginner friendly. Um, you should come check it out. Every Tuesday at six here at the factory. Yeah, we're on Meetup. No, uh, the room switches from time to time, but normally either in the Fraser room or um, BKD. Yeah. <laughs> Um, some other news about OpenSGF, this is like hot off the press and not all the details have been finalized yet, but uh, OpenSGF, I'm also one of the co-organizers. Um, we've been a Code for America brigade for a long time. That's a national organization that basically kind of is the fiscal sponsor for groups like OpenSGF. They are closing down their brigade program. And so it's meant that OpenSGF has had to find a new fiscal sponsor to cover some basic expenses and insurance and those kinds of things. and so. The announcement here is that OpenSGF is going to officially be joining Springfield Devs. So the main thing you'll see is some updates on the Springfield Devs website and that kind of thing. Um, but as an OpenSGF organizer, thank you to Springfield Devs for, for handling that for us. <coughs> um, also, in kind of some updates, we have a new sponsor, the uh, Edward J. Rice Company. Um, these they uh, They work in... I'm trying to remember exactly. Let me go and pull up the. Yes, that would be fantastic. Could you come up and say it into the mic? <laughs> no worries. It's just lots of people. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm Chris Rice, and uh, uh, I'm not a programmer, don't, so be nice to me. Uh, my company focuses on county government, or government in general, city and county government. Our goal is to improve uh, government operations and make, uh, there's a, we got a, got a lot of work to do. Yeah, a lot of opportunities there. So we're, we're actually in the mailing business. We've probably touched most of you. If you got uh, a personal property assessment list, if you own a vehicle, we mail those on behalf of the county. Uh, if you're an absentee voter, that ballot comes uh, through our company on behalf of the county. Um, and, um, and if you have a voter identification card or voter registration card, we, probably, we designed it and probably mailed it for the county. So that's what we do. And we're trying to cannibalize our business and, um, and get rid of as much paper as possible uh, and help the counties because they're very paper intensive in most offices. And we've... Uh, We've helped them get about as efficient as we can to this point. And moving forward, it's electronic solutions, uh, I believe, that are, gonna, that are gonna help them get more efficient. Uh, conserve your tax dollars uh, so we're not wasting 
money on inefficient paper mailings. Anyway, so I'm here to learn. I've met a lot of nice people. Thank you all for having us and happy to support the organization. So thank you. Okay, and with that, yes. All right, we're ready to move on to the main event. So uh, tonight's event is a panel all about uh, working from home versus in office, hosted by Chris over here, one of our board members. So I'm gonna pass it off to him, and if all the panelists can come take a seat up here, that would be awesome. And do make sure your mics are on. All my notes oh, on Hello. Microphone. Yeah. Might want to mic check. Mic. Hello. Yep. Yay. Okay. Good. All right. Um, these are our three panelists for this evening. Uh, Chase over here, then Greg, and then Jordan. Um, just a quick overview of their kind of experience and work from home versus in office. Jordan has worked completely remotely for the past five years at two different companies and before that worked full time in office. Greg has been recruiting and coaching remote and in-office members of the tech industry for the past 12 years and has been working some variation of remote for the past six years. And then Chase is just shy of five years in the industry as, and has spent the majority of the time working remote or working in-office with distributed teams. So, start us out. Um, actually, backpedaling a bit. That is the QR code for the Slido. So while I'm asking some of the opening questions, if you could all go ahead and ask your own questions as they come up, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, but to start us off, um, can you tell us a bit about yourselves? Like, What got you involved in your current field? What are some hobbies you have, et cetera? Chase, do you want to start us out? Yeah, sure. Uh, so like Chris said, I'm pretty new to the industry, about five years. Uh, been coding since I was eight. Uh, got into it because I was a big space nerd, and I figured uh, maybe I could work on the rover. That did not happen. Um, <laughs> yet, yet. It hasn't happened yet. Right, right. Um, so, you know, I just uh, continued with computer science through the, the high school robotics team and went into it as an industry because I think that it's kind of the biggest force multiplier that exists in the world, and it's the, the place where people can do the most good. So, uh, like you said, I've been in uh, recruiting for the last 12 years, and especially, specifically in the tech space. I love everything techy and everything else. I just can't do any of it. Uh, I would like to mention that I did do Hello World once successfully, so that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I've been coaching people on, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've been coaching people on career development and things like that for a long time, so, yeah. Hey, I'm Jordan. Um, I grew up in Springfield, and I graduated from MSU with a degree in animation, actually. Uh, quickly decided I did not want to do that for work, and so I was just working at um, some local bars and restaurants and stumbled into a help desk job at American National. Um, I moved from there into QA, and then did some test engineering, and then moved into development. Um, found my true love, writing native iOS code in Swift, and that's what I do now. Great. Um, I have to do some more backpedaling. Back this is the first time I've hosted a panel. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, none of the views any of us voice in this panel are the views of the places where we work, just a bunch of devs having a chat. Okay, got that out of the way. Um, <laughs> what's the setup at your current job? Jordan, do you wanna start? Sure, um, so I'm on a team with four Android engineers and two iOS, including myself. Um, I think three of us total are remote and the rest are in office. Um, my previous job, I went there because it was really remote friendly and uh, I would say like half, maybe a little more of my team was fully remote. Um, this one was a company that I think started doing remote work because of the pandemic. Um, but that said, I haven't really had any issues as far as working like remotely and collaboratively. Um, my manager is in the Bay Area and that's where the headquarters is and then we have 
Right now, the policy is two in-person meet weeks a year for the team. Greg, do you want to go? Sure. Uh, so right now, uh, I work for Next Level Solutions, and they are pretty geographically dispersed, mainly uh, North America and some Latin America. Uh, my team specifically, it's five of us. Uh, three of them are hybrid, like kind of two in, three in, uh, two out, um, or remote. And then there's two that are fully remote, one in Puerto Rico and one in uh, uh, Portland, Maine. Um, and it's been, it's been good. It's been interesting to now go from being the remote guy to uh, leading a remote-ish team. Uh, so it's, it's been good. It's been interesting. Yeah, so I'm currently on a contract to hire period with CUNA Mutual up in Madison. A uh, whole team is distributed across the Midwest, and they are now a remote first company. Nice. All right. Um, moving to the next part, which would be of these setups that you've worked at, uh, which would you say you prefer and why? Serge, do you want to start this one? Yeah, so I uh, personally do prefer working in an office. Um, I am just a very kind of extrinsically motivated person, and it really helps to have you know people around to kind of keep me accountable. Um, I've had to really work over the last five years to kind of build up the skills to to function well in a remote environment. Uh, for me, I I love the ability to work wherever. Uh, I don't like having to work remote. Like if that's the only option, I have found that I don't really like that as much because I like being able to go somewhere to see real human beings that I'm not related to at some point. Uh, so that's always nice. Um, but so I, I just like having options and flexibility. I guess we have the spectrum because I definitely <laughs> prefer remote work. Uh, that was like a big driver in me changing jobs. And one of the requirements for the job I have now was that it was fully remote. Um, Part of that is that I didn't want to move uh, to like the Bay Area or anything. Uh, like I have roots here, my family's here, I have three young kids. And part of that is that I struggle a lot with like anxiety, depression, I have ADHD. So there's like a lot of factors within office work that make it really hard for me personally. And I found working from home helps alleviate that. All right. Um, which would you say is the most best beneficial for employees and why? Greg, you want to start with that? So I don't think that there is a thing that should be prescribed. I think it really, I mean, the, the spectrum that we've got here, we've got, uh, I mean, literally, perfectly, we, pl we planned this. Um, it's a scale of what we want, but I think that's what it needs to be, is there are different people with different needs and different reasons and whatever else, and if you need to be 100% remote and you can be effective in that environment, fantastic. If you need to be 100% on site because that's how you're most effective, great. If you need a mix, fantastic, cool. Uh, I don't think there's any one size fits all thing. I think it's it has to do with, with the person. Well, do you want to call out some specific benefits you've seen in the different setups? Uh, Specific benefits, I mean, working from home, uh, you don't have to go into the work, uh, into the office, which is, which is nice. You don't have to drive. It's a lot easier. You're not spending as much money on going out or things like that. Uh, I have four kids, uh, one right there. Yeah, <laughs> I, specifically one more than Jordan. So it is a competition. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so you have to show both of us up and get seven. Yeah, no, um, but it can be tricky because uh, I don't know if you know this about children. They can be loud um, and needy and awesome. Eli is awesome. Everybody say hi, Eli. Hi, Eli. <laughs> and he's videoing, I think. Um, but uh, that's tricky. And sometimes it's uh, tough because there might be things going on inside the office that you just don't get to participate in. And that's because you chose to be remote or need to be remote or whatever, and that's fine. But the benefits of it, uh, of remote specifically, is I mean, there's there's a lot of flexibility of even being able to take your kid to piano or something like that um, because you don't have that commute on the way home. 
um, but there is a possibility of missing out or just not being as productive because you don't have the, hey, Jordan, how do I fix this thing? Um, and just turning your chair or like kicking a door down to your manager and say, I need help. So it can be tricky. Yeah, I think piggybacking on that, like especially when it comes to kids and family, there's like pros and cons on both sides. Like I'm always accessible to my family <laughs> because they have to go up the stairs to see me. Um, so especially we have like uh, almost one year old, so she often gets needy and, and it's a lot easier for dad to come upstairs. He stays home with the kids um, and see me than to like deal with her screaming in the background while I'm working. Um, but that's something I like about remote work. I wanted to do it to be closer to my family and it gives me the flexibility to see them like go downstairs for lunch, go outside um, and play with them on breaks. And so like that part's really nice too. Um, I think I wanted to call out too like about how you said you have the flexibility to go in when you want and you have to see people. Um, my last job when the pandemic hit stopped doing like summits on sites, off sites with the teams. And that was something that I didn't realize I would miss so much because I think like that is a really key part of remote work is having regular in person face to face communication. Like even with having that twice a year, even once a year, um, it builds like on the relationships that you've established. And I think that that is something crucial to the way that I work, even though I prefer working remotely. Chase, do you got anything? Uh, yeah, I, I just think that remote work is is kind of the clear winner and benefits to the employee um, from the flexibility to work when you want, how you want, to being able to be there with your family, to kind of the environmental uh, externalities of the daily commute. I think the remote work is the clear winner as much as it makes me sad. Yeah, you can pick your own music and you can set the temperature. <laughs> you can make lovely. the music as loud as you want. Uh, if your wife's not If home. you really believe in yourself, you can play music as loud as you want in office, too. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> not taking that risk. Um, so which would you say is the most beneficial for the employer and why? You want to start that one, Chase? Yeah, sure. Uh, this Remember, one none of the views you express here. Right, 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 right. Hey, my employer is remote first. Uh, they're, they're not going to have a problem. Okay. Um, I think that the most beneficial setup for the employer, whether in office or not, is to act as though you're going to be remote first. I think that having a culture of written asynchronous communication first is really beneficial to everybody, especially if you're a company that expects to scale to distributed teams. Yeah. <laughs> no <I> mean, notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, there's benefits on, on all of it, but I agree, like, Regardless of I, backing up, backpedaling, uh, I don't think we're going to see a huge rise in on-site as much as it ever was in the past. I think we're going to continue to go farther and farther remote. I think it's still gradual because there's companies that are bringing everybody back in because there's benefits to that. But the idea of being able to communicate, like he was saying, like that is huge. It's way faster. It is potentially more efficient. And so uh, I think the biggest benefit, also from a recruiter standpoint, the talent is a lot easier to find if you have a geographically dispersed location. Um, and we like, specifically NLS, uh, we like being able to hire people that are local um, if possible, but not everybody, like our Puerto Rico office, they don't do what we, like there's nobody really in Puerto Rico that does what we do. And so we're having to train that up from university students. Uh, but it really kind of de just depends on what the situation is, but agreed. Yeah, on that note, um, it can be cost effective for employers too. Um, I know like my current employer and my last employer did like tier-based pay. And so where you live geographically determined the amount that you were paid, um, which that's a whole different discussion uh, if you're for or against that. But it can mean that um, employers are getting like the same amount of work from people who live in a lower cost of living area for less money. All right. That wraps up my questions. Uh, Levi, do you want to swap this over to the Slido? And we will start asking audience questions. So... Let me refresh this page real quick. 
No, I'll, I'll ask them. You guys don't need to crane your necks. Once this loads. Okay, there we go. What are some of the best ways to focus and tune out distractions when working from home? I've heard it can be difficult, as you noted, especially if kids are home all day. I'll start, I guess, <laughs> since I specifically called that out. Um, I'm lucky in that we moved and I have like a dedicated space. And if I'm in a meeting and I'm like, please don't disturb me, I'll shut the door. And like, that's the way that we've worked out an indication for me to have that time to myself and meetings. Um, sometimes if I'm like working in a shared space, like the living room, if I feel like being on the couch, um, I'll like step away and go outside. And so it, it's like a struggle sometimes, but I feel like in my role as an individual contributor, um, I don't have like a whole lot of meetings. So it's not like all day meetings where I think it would be more of a problem. It's like I know when these occasional meetings are and I can set aside that space. Um, and I also, I don't know, I am like tune out my children so <laughs> I can like <laughs> be around them and working. That's a really solid point about the meetings because my reason for needing space is because I am in meetings all day uh, in interviews. And I've, I've had the experience of being remote where I, w I didn't have the extra space, but I did have the kids. And uh, I remember I was like, I think I have to move into the closet. <laughs> and I literally, it was not like a big walk-in spacious closet. It was like enough for a desk and a chair and uh, me trying to move clothes away from it so that I could, uh, so that I could have these interviews without uh, very lovely children. <laughs> uh, but um, that's something to really consider too, because like if you don't have a space that you can go to to have those meetings, and you do have kids that are going to need your attention, uh, one of the great things about the pandemic. Uh, is that people got used to kids walking behind or yelling or a cat jumping on your lap or whatever. So it's, I think most people are probably used to it by now uh, and are a lot more gracious than they used to be, but um, that is a thing to consider. Uh, noise cancel canceling headphones, invest in those. Yeah, so I don't have kids, uh, so I don't have any suggestions on that front, but what I do have are two incredibly needy cats. <laughs> and. The one thing that I've learned is that cats are a lot easier to ignore than children. So I don't have any really usable yeah. advice here. I don't have anything actionable to suggest uh, crank the music up as loud as you want. Okay. Um, next up, in your experience, how much travel time have you saved through work, for, for work from home per week? Oh, and quick interjection. Um, you guys can't, you can all upvote these things. That's what the thing on the side is, so do tell us the questions you want us to ask most. Yep. Plenty? I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, like 20, really, minute, yeah, 20 really minutes fun. a day, twice a day, uh, to and from, if that's your commute. Um, I, the first time I went remote, I was actually living in California, and so like the time I saved there was like an hour and a half each way, and so that was huge. That was a big deal, but yeah, it kind of depends on. I think I saved something like 24 hours of driving on my commute uh, since my company's up in Madison. Um, so like this job just wouldn't be possible without remote work. Yeah, uh, I moved outside of Springfield um, so I could have some land and some farm animals. Uh, so my commute would probably be like, I don't know, 40 minutes each way if I were at my like old job going in office. Uh, but like you said, the headquarters is in San Francisco, so <laughs> that would be a bit. Uh, a thing that I just thought of right now, I've got uh, a 2016 car that has less than, I think it's 45,000 miles on it, and it's my commuter car, uh, but I've put like almost no miles on it, which is a random benefit that I didn't think about, but also on the insurance side, if you drive less, your insurance premiums are lower because you're at lower risk, so. You finally brought up something I can show you up at. I don't have a car, and that's great. I love that so much for me. That is nice. I love that for you, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one. Uh, does most remote work still have set times that you are on the clock, or is it more like freelance work where you pick your own hours to finish your tasks for work? 
I think that's really dependent on the company. Um, my current role, we have like core hours set for the team from eight to two. Outside of that, you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, but I've, I've worked for companies that were, no, we're gonna monitor you from eight to five, and I've worked for companies that were like, hey man, as long as the tickets keep getting to the done state, we don't really care. Yeah, it's, uh, I, th I would probably say the majority are still like eight to five, but less uh, stringent on like checking your time every minute and stuff like that. Um, the tricky part on that though is actually stopping as a human being because like you're at your office if you are remote, like 24 hours a day or whatever, that's where you live. And so uh, that can be tricky. This was also a big draw for remote work for me and I recently went through the interviewing process and I would say like almost every company I talked to was like, we're not gonna monitor your hours. We trust that you're like a professional adult who's gonna get your work done. Um, and so like having young kids, like I said, sometimes I'll need to sleep in a little bit because I was up all night with them. Um, sometimes I might need to like leave early for some kid of it. Um, Etc. And so it's nice that I can like set my own hours. Essentially, um, it's really dependent on like we have kind of core hours where it's like if someone pings you on Slack, like be ready to respond um, or give them a heads up if you're going to be gone longer than an hour. And then other than that, like just get your work done, go to meetings <laughs> that you accepted. Um, and so that's been really nice and like mentally a load off for me. I think so. One of the things that uh, with the core working hours, that's been the same for the last couple companies that I've worked for. Um, but the flexibility to be able to like, I want to go to my kid's baseball game or whatever um, is huge. But that's also true for the people that are in office for at least the last two companies that I've been at where you want to go watch your kid's baseball game. Cool. Do you have your stuff done? Awesome. Um, if And so the ability to like, hey, I'm going to take off like three hours, but I'm maybe I'll be back on and get it like done later is an option or I'm not going to I'll but I will get it done. Uh, I think it's like there are some awesome employers out there that do trust you to get that stuff done and allow you to have that balance. Um, but that's kind of to her point of ask those questions in the interview um, to make sure that because there are remote companies that don't even have that. You might be remote, but you don't have the flexibility to actually be there for life. So, Yeah, and I guess kind of what you said too is like, sometimes that does become a drawback for me is like, oh, I can just do this later. I'm gonna go wander around outside for a while. And then it's like 6 p.m. and I'm like, oh man, I've got some more things to do. <laughs> Time to log back on. That, that does happen. I, I find that it's kind of a drawback for me to be able to manage my own schedule like that. So I personally do work just eight to five. Like I'm in the office at my desk at eight and I'm out at five o'clock or, or I have really bad work hours. <laughs> so here's the next one. Um, where do you feel more productive? In, in office or at home or hybrid? depends on what it is that I'm doing. Um, if it's like a super collaborative, like strategic meeting that's gonna maybe like plan out the year, plan out the quarter, I would prefer to do that in person if possible because there is an easier back and forth. It's a little bit more natural, um, but there are times where I just need to be heads down. I don't want somebody to talk to me. And so that is a lot easier remote. Yeah, I think my equipment is better at home than at most of the, the roles that I've been in. So in, in that sense, it certainly feels more productive. Um, but like I said, I need I am an, an extrinsically motivated person, and it helps me to have uh, like folks around. Um, I can kind of mock that up working from home with like the coffee shop and the library, especially with the corporate VPNs now that they're in place and working everywhere. Um, but yeah, I think really just the freedom to, to choose your own work place is really beneficial for a lot of people. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think mostly from home. Um, like I said, having those occasionally occasional in-person 
meet weeks helps like invigorate me, I guess, and get more inspired and like get to know people and um, understand like what motivates them and vice versa. But mostly it's like having my own environment and my own things. Um, and yeah, I'm, I mean like just having the quiet time and the space that I like works best for me. How has working from home affected your ability to work with others? Do you see any downsides or upsides? Okay, I'll go first. Um, I think that working from home has definitely made me a better written communicator. Um, and maybe counterintuitively, it's certainly made me a lot uh, more willing to reach out to others to unblock me when I'm, st when I'm stuck on something. Um, when you're in office, you can kind of sort of rely on somebody walking by and noticing that you're tearing your hair out. And when you're working from home, you just can't do that. Uh, so I think it's I think it's certainly pushed more collaboration in my in myself personally. Can you say the question again? <laughs> One minute. Let me pull up the archive. What she said. Um, how has working from home affected your ability to work with others? Do you see any downsides or upsides? I mean, especially at the size of the company that I'm at now, there's a lot of times that I'm waiting on other teams to like review a PR and I'll have to bug them over and over because they're getting like a bunch of other asynchronous requests to do that. Um, and it's easy to like lose track of things that like asks or what you've been working on um, in that like sort of asynchronous remote environment. But overall, um, yeah, I think I'm more responsive because I'm just like at my computer, so I can like respond to people way quicker. Um, and then it's a lot easier to find the people that you need to talk to because you have those um, like documented or written avenues to get to them. Yeah, to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying, one of the things to really question yourself about before going remote, because remote is really cool and flashy and whatever else, but if you're the type of person that feels uncomfortable asking for help when there are people around, there's a possibility that you might feel okay doing it because there's a screen divider and whatever else. But where I've seen people fail at remote is they don't ask the questions or they said, I, I pinged this person once. And like she said, like you might have to ping them like 20 times or whatever. Uh, but that follow-up is way more important when you're remote and can feel a lot more uncomfortable because you're like, I asked you, so you should get back to me right now. Uh, and it's not like an in-person thing where I'm like, hey, could you show me how to do this thing? And you're like, yes, Greg. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, it's how you do it. It's, it's just different and it can be uh, a way to fail at being remote if you don't actually ask for the things that you need. I think that's a really good thing to point out. Or you could do what I did, which is to get fired from your first remote job because you're bad at it. You could do that. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend it, but it is an option. <laughs> but then um, you get to do it again? You, I didn't do it again. Okay. I, I tried really hard not to do it again. Um, I think also an important thing, if you're, if you're not remote and you're thinking about making the switch to remote, is there's definitely a mindset shift that you need to take when you're communicating written with your teammates which is uh, you definitely have to be way more willing to take things charitably and assume that they mean the best thing possible. Uh, for like an embarrassing story, my first year working in, on like a distributed team, uh, people would always in their Slack messages to me with a period. And I, being of a certain age, thought that meant they were mad at me or like were being passive aggressive. And I had to like communicate this to my boss because I was like, look, I know that you don't mean it, but like sometimes if I get defensive, this is why. <laughs> um, so it's definitely definitely something to, to keep in mind, especially if you're used to like primarily text communication. Yeah, no, that's that tone is so much harder to mm -hmm. uh, read written, and so sometimes I'll write something where it's it's just feedback, but if I read it, I'm, I put a disclaimer mm -hmm. at the bottom, like mm -hmm. because this is written, I want you to know I'm not pissed off at you right <laughs> now. I just think this is what could be done better. Um, I just use lots of exclamation points. So it sounds like you're really pissed. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's where emojis come in. You just, yeah. All right, I'm going to answer this next one myself. Do remote workers cook for lunch or order Grubhub every day? We want to order Grubhub every day. 
But the budget says no. If you live in a rural area, then you don't have that option. So, <laughs> <laughs> life hack. <laughs> You do. It's just way more expensive. No, they like literally don't deliver really? to me. Yeah. Um, but my husband stays at home and he cooks for me. So. Oh, life hacks. Life hacks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I cook uh, yeah. for my wife when I'm working at home. She does not work at home. So I'm thinking that I'm getting the, the short end of the stick here. <laughs> <laughs> what you need is a husband. It sounds uh, like oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. ask her about that. She yeah. might be into it. <laughs> um, I think it's different for everybody. I mean, even if you go to the office, there's some people that bring their lunch every day and some people that go out to eat every day. I don't know how they do it. Uh, they must make a lot more money than I do or they just don't care. I don't know. Uh, but I think it just depends on the person. Do ask them when you get a chance because I want to know too. Ask them if they make more money than I am? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, how have you seen companies adapt to the shift towards remote work? And what have they done to ensure that their employees remain engaged and productive? Yeah, I think um, kind of what I mentioned earlier, one big thing is like supporting those in-person events um, as regularly as they can and giving people like that avenue. Also giving options to have hybrid work environments. Like we, I know my current company um, kept offices open, like specific ones, so that people had that option. Um, and I lost my train of thought, so I'll let Greg go. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? <laughs> I was so entranced, but that was a great answer, yeah. How have you seen companies adapt to the ah. shift towards remote work, and what have they done to ensure that their employees remain engaged and productive? Uh, well, the idea of bringing people on site so that they can meet the team. Like for example, I've got my team on site this week. This is the first time I've met two of them. And uh, you left them. What? For this. And I left them for this. <laughs> I was like, don't want to see you. Um, no, but it's it makes a huge difference because you can make, like I feel like I've met them before. It didn't feel like meeting a stranger, which was kind of cool. But um, I think one of the things that if you have a company that is both has a physical location and remote workers. One of the potential downfalls from a employer thing is, well, all the people in the Springfield office get popcorn and you know puppies, you know, and the remote workers can feel like, wait, I I don't get that, and it's it's a tricky thing. And so figuring out ways of bringing people on site, or instead of doing uh, a ping pong tournament you can do a, I don't know, Mario Kart thing or you know whatever. And so it's thinking of what can we do that includes everybody that's from a culture standpoint is a little bit tricky. Um, but Yeah, I guess on that note too, like the office might have snacks and drinks for free, um, but like at my company now, you get a stipend per month that you can spend on like remote work expenses. Where um, do you work? Yeah, um, <laughs> I can't speak oh, yeah, as a representative <laughs> of this company, um, but I don't. I don't know. You, if I you don't have to. That was a joke. You can look me up on LinkedIn. <laughs> I uh, before I said it's a fintech company that is a shape. It's not. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> So everyone go get a job at Block so you can get a stipend <laughs> for Grubhub every day. And that's something that's actually happening more and more often at companies that they are offering that to, because it's you're having to get more and more competitive with, I mean, everybody expects re remote to be, at least be an option nowadays. And so there's a lot more companies that are starting to do that, which is pretty cool. So I was going to say a monthly equipment stipend, uh, and they beat me. Uh, so to get into the nitty gritty a little more, I think that the number one thing a company can do to support its remote workforce is to try to drive that culture of written asynchronous communication. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of conversations and a lot of decisions that get made in person that never get documented anywhere. And that's a problem for your in-office workers too, right? Like we've all had that situation where you're trying to find out why a decision was made and somebody points you to the wizard down the hall who like goes into the archives of Minas Tirith for an hour or three and then comes back with the answer. And that's the kind of thing that you can avoid with, with that kind of written culture. Yeah. Except when you have like five different mediums for documenting things and then you have to search through all of them. You just have five wizards. 
that would be ideal. Uh, <laughs> at the very least, not Slack. Yeah, not, so like it has to have a good search functionality. So I've seen a lot of teams that will use Slack or Teams as their place to keep all of that documentation, and I suggest you don't do that. Uh, Confluence isn't terrible. Notion. Um, Notion, uh, I haven't actually used that professionally, but I like it uh, in my side projects. Um, even sh like a SharePoint site is, is a better experience than keeping your docs primarily in Teams. Yeah. Okay. Um. How do companies know if a candidate is a good fit for a work from home position? You were made for this one. <laughs> I was born for this. Uh, so ask, hopefully they ask the questions that they need to ask. Like, well, one, have you, have you been remote? And was that successful? What are the things that worked? What are the things that didn't? Ask some questions like, what did you like about it? What were the things that were really hard about it? How do you, like, what are the lessons that you learned from the time that you got fired? from the first time being remote. Not calling in out anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, um, I was in my head planning no, ours. <laughs> I know. But uh, I mean, that, I don't know how else to answer that other than like hopefully they're asking specific questions to, to figure that out. Um, but it, I think more than that, it's also asking yourself the question like, do I think I can actually be successful? Do I have, do I have a spacer? Am I going to have to move into the closet? And like, do I feel OK following up? Do I know? if I, should I use a lot of exclamation marks or emojis or disclaimers or what? Like, it's really, there are certain people that just aren't ready for it. Um, and you either dive head first into it and figure it out, hopefully, or you choose not to. I kind of want to jump in on yours and flip the question a little bit. I think that there's a lot of work that a candidate needs to do in the interview process as well to determine if the company that you're applying for a remote job yeah is gonna be good for that. And if that's the case, I do recommend getting fired from your first job, because you can lead with that and be like, here are the problems that I've had, here's how I've tried to address them, how does your company address these kinds of problems? And the way that they react to that question really tells me a lot about like whether this is a remote culture that's worth engaging in. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think more so than is the person gonna be a good fit for remote, like do you handle and support remote work well as a company? Um, and so there's a lot of things, especially like when someone's new and I've given some feedback, um, starting at this company even like that have been a struggle for me onboarding remotely and, um, just like being able to support people in that process is more important, I think, than the person. And then maybe they hate it, but <laughs> you did all you could. Okay, um, is an on-call schedule easier work from home or in office? And then have, you're gonna have to rephrase this question slightly. Or in office and then have to be on call after work. So I think an on-call, I, th I think so, yeah. I think on-call rotation is certainly easier if you're working remote um, because no longer do you have to be within like a certain number of miles of the office. You have to be near an internet connection with your laptop which is still like a limit on what you can do after hours, but it's definitely an easier limit to accommodate than like, hey, you need to be available to get to the office within five minutes, you know? Agreed. Yeah, I think the only downside I'd say is like, if you don't know how to handle that and you need to reach out to other people, sometimes that like isn't set up in a good way to notify others for help. Keep your, keep your on-call rotation teams-based, folks. Yeah. Don't just put one person on call. If you started a tech company today, would you consider your company's work days be work from home, in office, or hybrid? I kind of going off of the one that I said earlier. It, what do you want? Because I, I would love, I love the ability to be able to be in a room with other people, um, but that's that's not for everybody, and that's okay. Uh, and. I would rather somebody feel really confident being who they are and do great work where they feel most comfortable doing that. And I don't want to limit and say you can only be on site or it's only remote or whatever. So ideally, I'd like to have options. I think that uh, this really depends on like what scale you intend to get to. If you want to start like a small team, a company that's not designed to like hyperscale uh, you can choose whatever you're most comfortable with, and you should choose whichever communication style you're better at. 
Um, but if you're going to start a company that's designed to like, you know, hockey stick growth, you're going to have distributed teams. Um, I think you have to start with uh, a remote first setup. I don't think that a, uh, an in-office setup for that kind of company is really an option anymore. I agree. Okay. What are some things you miss about in-office work? I got one. Food. I miss I, food a I lot. was actually going to say that. <laughs> like, I, I miss just being able to go out to lunch with my teammates. Um, I've also found, like, my last job, I was on a team with people who were really chatty on Slack with me, and this team is not. <laughs> so I'm often just talking to myself. Um, so I've had to, like, make other friends on different teams or have different, like, outlets for that um, because I think I'm, like, an introverted person in general, but I like being social. I like having that, um, like, I like not talking about work all the time and getting to know the people that I work with. Yeah, I think a, a similar kind of thing. Uh, I'll call it uh, semi-productive procrastination. Um, you know, all those times that you, like, grab your senior engineer and you're like, we're going to talk about something that's not work right now, which is technically team building and I think is important for your team culture, but, like, it's not getting your tickets closed, right? Um, I think that that kind of, atmosphere is really beneficial and I think that that's probably what I miss the most about in office work. Yeah, when I was 100% remote, that is exactly what I miss is just the ability to have I guess more organic relationships. Um, yeah, because it it's just nice to be able to, to do those things. And I think it's worth noting, people will tell you that there are ways to mitigate that and that's true. It does not feel the same though, like subjectively from in that experience, it doesn't. I'll also add on, like, having sick days is a lot murkier for me. Um, I'm like, if my head doesn't hurt and I can, like, work in bed, even if I'm feeling sick, I'll still do it from home. Whereas, like, if I was in an office situation, I probably would have just taken the day. So I feel like, for me personally, that's a harder line to draw um, versus just taking PTO. <laughs> yeah, that actually just is. I think that's maybe a universal experience. Um, have, I, have you tried, like, being worse at being sick, though? <laughs> Vomit more of like, 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 no, no, just not handle it as well. Just, like, be like, no, I'm dying now. I have a stomach flu. But then I have kids, and I'm like, my kid was sick yesterday, so I should probably work today while be I'm sick. Be sick like your kids are sick is the trick, okay? <laughs> But I think also, I'm the person that will try to encourage people, like, you're not feeling good, just take the day off. Like, work will wait. And so if I have other people reminding me of that, that helps a lot in a remote culture as well. All right. Um, how has technology played a role in your ability to work from home or in the office? And what tools or platforms have been most helpful? A computer. <laughs> the internet. <laughs> yes. Um, I have three, but I don't need that. I work a lot of days, honestly, just on my laptop. Like, I like the flexibility that I can work from my couch or my chair for a while and then go up to my office and work from there. Like, changing it up helps me. Um, but yeah, honestly, like, just having an internet connection and a laptop, um, a lot of the stuff that makes it possible for me is on the company side. Like you said, having a VPN that I can log into, um... And, you know, they sent me other stuff. Like, I have to work with hardware, um, so just the, the, the postal service. Shout out to the postal service. <laughs> yeah, three monitors is, is important, I find. Um, I don't like to work with fewer than three. Uh, I'll say that, like, your company's choice of telecommunications products does have an influence on, like, what kind of remote culture you get. If you're using Microsoft Teams, you're gonna have less textual interaction because it's not a pleasant experience. Um, and so your team's remote culture will tend towards synchronous video calls more often. Um, but if you're using like you know Slack and the G Suite, thing, things are smooth sailing, I find. Uh, one of the things, kind of you asked about bandwidth that I've noticed with uh, specifically people in this area that do live a little bit outside city limits or whatever, that can be a real tricky issue, especially if you need to do like video calls and stuff like that. Like 
I talked to, I think, three different people today that were like, man, we're still on the Starlink waiting list, and sorry, and it's, and <laughs> yeah, you're still on that. And so that, like, some of the internet providers outside of city limits, they just suck, and there's no way around that. Um, and so that, that is another great thing to kind of think about. If you are outside of city limits and you want to work remote, that can be tricky. Yeah, when I, I was already remote when I found this house, so that was on my list. It was like, can I get a solid internet connection? Okay, I can answer this next question. Is calling before messaging acceptable etiquette? Anyone below Gen X, or including Gen X, will say no. Can I expand your answer? Also, if you have a question, you shouldn't say hey first. You should say hey in the question, and then send the whole thing. You should say like, hey, comma, can you help me with X? Hey, comma, can you call me is also acceptable. Hey, we need to talk. <laughs> uh, don't hey, we need to talk. That's not, that's, first off, just don't we need to talk, people. <laughs> uh, schedule random one-on-ones. Keep them on their toes. So traditionally, my, my opinion uh, is if it's not something that's blocking your work stream, it should be asynchronous. You should send them a chat message and have them work it on their side and then respond to you when they're ready. If it is blocking your work stream, that's when, hey, comma, can I call you is probably appropriate. Um, and that's what I tend to do. Because you're right. Like, you do have a lot more back and forth with those textual communication channels. And if you're trying to do chat synchronously, where you're both paying attention to it at the same time, it's so much lower than voice. So at that point, I think a call is, is more than appropriate. I think it depends, too. <laughs> like, you can say, if it's not blocking, that you would prefer to talk to them on the phone. Like, if it's a more complicated problem, you can say, like, hey, can I put some time on your calendar to go over this together? Um, but to your point, I would much rather someone, like, reach out first and ask than, like, something randomly appear that I have no context on. Yeah, it's just worth having a conversation within the team, I think, because, and everybody has like different textual communication preferences too. Like I'll say, if you want my attention, I am me, because I cannot ignore the team's yellow light. I just, it's, I got a sensory thing, I can't ignore it. So if you need something that it doesn't need my immediate attention, I'd prefer that you like email me. Um, and then if you call me, I'm gonna assume that I'm getting fired, is generally how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, like on my team, there's only one other iOS engineer, but we use huddles on Slack a lot. So, yeah, so he'll, like, maybe I'll ping and ask a question, and he'll answer it, and I'll be like, oh, sorry, that didn't answer my whole question. And then I'll just ask if we can jump on a huddle, which is just like a voice call. Um, and then we can talk it out there. But, yeah, if it's a bigger thing, then I'll put some time on the calendar and, like, give them a heads up on what um, I want to meet about. But, yeah, to your point, I think it's dependent on the person, um, the team, the role. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think is better for society? Remote, whoops. What do you think is better for society? Remote workers across multiple communities or in-person workers in the same community? Do we have time for me to like live write a manifesto while we're here? Yes. <laughs> oh no, I was bluffing. I guess off the cuff I'd say remote work. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of places in com like the community like this that you can get together and you can like meet people around you. But if you weren't empowered to like have remote work culture, you w might not ever meet people in those like different communities and get to know them. Um, so I don't know. That's just like my initial gut reaction. Oh, man, how do you do? I'm like paralyzed with analysis here. I'm like, on the one hand, it's better for the environment to stay home. On the other hand, it's probably better for your local community to have like jobs in the area. I, I'm going to still stick with, uh, I think there needs to be options because uh, one of the things that came out of the pandemic, a lot of people that weren't used to being remote, that maybe they like psychologically or mentally just like they couldn't do that and they ended up becoming depressed when they weren't before and so there's that piece there's other people that they might have social anxiety and they need to be home or whatever and there's so there's I think it's not a simple 
answer. No, you have to choose. I have to choose? Yeah. <laughs> you, there's no middle ground here. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. That's an option. So I have some context on this because I've been trying to buy a house, and it is now impossible to buy a house in Springfield because we have, and I am pro remote work. We have a ton of pro remote people showing up in Springfield and buying houses. So all the house prices have doubled. Look, I want to say whoever asked that question needs to like DM me on Discord because I want to have like a, a back and forth to get that manuscript written, and you'll get a, a co-author uh, listing off of it. Yeah, and he's got his manifesto. So they definitely. <laughs> need to be. Yeah, I think that's a good Yes, but if you go into the Zillow data and look at like the houses, they have all doubled in cost since the last few years. Anyway, rant over. Um, <laughs> ordering Gip Grubhub is great, but I feel like I need to work while I lunch. How do you all do breaks? Ooh, don't work while you lunch. Uh, that's my first tip. Um, um, well. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Uh, I also, like I think I mentioned earlier, I have ADHD, so like if I get in a groove and I just want to knock work out, then um, I might like just eat at my desk. Um, so I think, yeah, just like most of the things we've said, it's dependent on the person. <laughs> like if you need to force yourself to have those break times, which sometimes I do, I have like a Pomodoro timer. I have this little light cube that you can flip and it turns off the light when the timer's up and it makes me really happy. So um, that at least reminds me to stand up. <laughs> uh, for me, if you ask my wife, my work-life balance is practically non-existent when I am remote. Not because I don't want to take breaks. I don't, there's something broken in my head that says I'm like, I am here to work. And I have to prove that I'm working. I, it's really bad. And so luckily, she is like, Greg, you need to eat or you need to do something. At the office, I have a physical reminder of like, oh, people are getting up to go do what's culturally acceptable called eating. Uh, <laughs> I should probably do that too. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm a pretty ritual-driven person. So I, I will amend my previous suggestion. <laughs> don't work through lunch, but you don't have to take work lunch at noon. How about that? And then you can you can just move things along. Uh, I think that it's really important to protect that time. Like I said, I, I am very ritual driven. So for me, it is it is twelve o'clock noon. I am out of my chair. I am in the kitchen cooking food. Um, but I think that just just always protect that lunch time for yourself. Uh, you don't have to order Grubhub if you don't want Uber Eats works too. Yeah, and even if I'll eat at my desk, I will have like a break where I'm like, I'm gonna go in the backyard and mm -hmm. I'd rather like play with my kids than sit there and eat, you know? So it yeah. just kind of depends. But I think taking breaks is important um, and also hard when you're at home. I have a standing desk. Uh, I mostly sit, but it's there. <laughs> I only sit because I haven't like ponied up the cash for a standing desk yeah. yet. I even have a treadmill. How much oh was the standing desk? Mm, I don't know. I got an uplift one. It's really nice. Those are cool. Yeah, I actually, before I got this one, I had like a desktop one that was a lot cheaper. Like you set on top of your existing desk and it'll convert. So you can kind of feel out if you like it. Um, but then I... I don't know. I had a stipend, so. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> want to turn this into like QVC, but how does the, how does like a monitor arm work with <laughs> with like one of those desktop converters? Yeah, I have um, like the monitor. I have my monitor arms attached to the desk, mm -hmm. and then I have a power strip right. that's has an extension cord, so like that'll go up. I'm just planning for my ideal yeah. dream office. I'm I'll send you some pics. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I want that Pomodoro timer too. Mm -hmm. I know. I was like, I should just open an Amazon storefront. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Okay, so it's 7.30 now, so we should probably be winding it down. I will give you all one minute to decide to upvote your favorite question, um, and that'll be the last question. Oh, Unless you're all fine right with music. 15 more minutes. We could just do like a lightning round, I think. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Wait, what did you say? She was doing the Jeopardy sound. I was like, I don't know if that's appropriate music. Uh. Thank you. 
Okay, well, while well, people are deciding, I, I think we can just answer that top one. That's fine. Like lowercasing all of your stuff is fine. Nobody cares. What so about capitalizing everything? <laughs> Don't capitalize. See, that's yelling. But lowercasing everything. How is do fine. I formally? Yeah. I think I think as long as you're consistent with your grammatical transgressions, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, like if I'm writing in a design doc, I'll use punctuation. Um, if I'm pinging someone on Slack, I won't. I think it also depends on who you're talking to. Like if if it is a an executive or something like that that you're like, hey, I need to whatever, it might be a good idea to look literate. You don't you don't text your CEO Lamau? Like <laughs> what else? I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got here. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, we'll make this the last question. Has switching to working from home changed your perception of time? Now That's a perceive big time in a plan <laughs> way. This you, time. you have to have had a perception of time first for this to to really hold, and I I didn't at the yeah. office either, really. Yeah, I I honestly feel more productive at home, and so I feel like I have more time to myself. I think like taking the commute out, being able to like work on my own hours and get stuff done, and feeling like I get it done faster um, results in me perceiving that I have more time to myself. I don't know. Like, <laughs> uh, one thing, like with the time to yourself, one thing I will say is I love having 20 minutes between the office and my driveway where I might not even listen to the radio. I'm just like, it's quiet. And I processing. Don't, yeah, I'm processing or I, I call my dad or I listen to a podcast or whatever but it's like I have time to decompress from what could have been a stressful day and that is one of the difficulties that I found with remote is there I'm like I shut my laptop and I'm home and uh, it can be if you if you have young kids Eli I love you <laughs> but it can be a lot you know it's like all of a sudden everybody needs you immediately after everybody needed you at work and that is not answering that question, but... Uh, no, I feel you. Like, yeah. my husband stays home, and so he's with the kids all day. So as soon as I'm done, I feel like this <laughs> need to go take the kids from him and give him a break, because mm -hmm. he hasn't had one all day. Um, but I think also, like, if you communicate with partners or, like, you make that time for yourself, then you can, like, set up your own habits and rituals to decompress in whatever way that means to you. Mm -hmm. That's if you are good at doing that. <laughs> I'll just text you every day. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, well, thank you all for coming out. And if you will join you. me in giving our panelists a thank you as well. OK. Um, thank you for making it out, everyone, once again. A um, couple quick things before we close out uh, for real. Um, we, we are going to have an event next month. It's still kind of to be decided, but it should be June 7th. That's the first Wednesday of the month here at the E-Factory. Um, something else that I want to call out is that we are looking for volunteers for our events committee. So if you're interested in helping make these events possible, there is all sorts of small little things that we could certainly use help with from streaming to coordinating food to finding speakers, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in, in being a volunteer on our events committee, there's a channel in Discord called Committee Events. And we're planning our next meeting. It should be on Monday, where we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff figured out and start planning out the rest of the year. So anyways, thank you all for coming. And we hope to see you next month. <laughs>